Hi everybody, my name is Monica. I'm going to talk to you today about something kind of weird. It is cleaning a skull or any bones. Um, here's the finished product. Um, and you know, it's two pieces like that. I got this pig skull from the, my local deli. I just went in and asked them and they said they just got a pig in and they could give me a big head. They gave me half the head. It actually made it a lot easier for cleaning. Um, if you do get a full skull, you're going to have to get some other instruments to get inside the cavities to pull out the brains and stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is a really sweet project and I use this in my Halloween costume. And I learned a lot from cleaning it just about how the skull works. And honestly, I was very grossed out at first. I didn't think I could do it, but I did it. And I'm glad that I did. Um, so you should try it too. And so there it is. Like I said, I got the pig's skull as a full-on head from the deli. I wasn't expecting, I didn't know what I was expecting. And I ended up getting everything with the ear and the eyeball, the snout pretty much fully intact. There's hair on it still. So the first step was to take a sharp knife and to cut all those things off. So the ear is a major thing. I started just going to town cutting off little pieces at a time because it's kind of hard to cut. A lot of the fat is pretty easy to cut. Then when you get to the flesh, it's quite surprising at how tough it is. A lot of the tendons are difficult, but just keep going at it slowly but surely. You can get all the pieces off. From the size of the head to the size of this skull, it is amazing how small the skull is and, and how much you're going to have to take off. So definitely have some grocery bags to fill with all the flesh. Um, so I worked my way down pretty much until I could see, start seeing bone, until I started hitting some of the bone and got to more of the intricate pieces of flesh that were really stuck to the bone and that's how I knew I was ready. To. I used also a spoon um, to gouge out the eye which was pretty crazy. The eyeball I kept thinking it was going to pop and thank goodness it didn't because I probably would have screamed. But um, yeah, then the next step is to boil the skull. I took a very large pot and boiled it probably for half an hour to an hour at least until it was all of the flesh was getting really tender and um, it definitely smells up your house so you know this is kind of a big project to do. That was the second step just doing all the fine cleaning. I also used a wire brush which was really handy to scrub at the skull and get everything that was still clinging to the bone. If you don't have a wire brush you can also use like one of those plastic scrubber brushes and okay so you start getting down to the teeth and what I did was as soon as I got to a tooth basically they're loose when you're starting to clean all the flesh off. I would pull out the teeth anytime I came to one and save it in a little shot glass and clean them separately because I didn't want them getting lost in any of the flesh. And I went back later once it was all completely clean and dried and I took some Gorilla Glue and just glued the teeth back in. I kind of took a mental note of like which teeth went where. You could take pictures if you need to remind you. Um, okay, here's a picture of the roof of the mouth, which was kind of crazy because it just t totally peeled off the top, the top of the mouth. Here you can see some holes right here. It's that veins and tendons were running through. So I used tweezers to kind of pull those out. And like I said before, I was lucky that it was a half a skull because it was very easy to pull out the brain and just everything else, the nose cavity. Um, it was kind of gross in there. I think that was like one of the dirtiest parts. Everything was like brownish black, but some of it was like cartilage too in the nose area. The snout was really tough. The actual nose was really tough. The gums were very bizarre to take out. Um, overall, it was really weird. <laughs> I've never done anything like it. But it was also really cool. You know, after the first five, ten minutes of grossness, it became really fascinating. So there's also another method to clean the pig skull and if you don't want to go through all this process of like the dirty work and is that's actually through the way taxidermists do it and they use beetles because beetles just eat all the flesh off of the skull. And one of the good things about this is that your skull will be completely white. It will be really pristine. If you do it with the boiling method, the skull kind of has 
gets this yellow tint because of the way when the fat boils, it, it um, stains the bone. So I think it's kind of cool with the like yellowing, rotting look, but if you want a really pristine white um, bone, um, try contacting a taxidermist or sometimes if you have a local university, they may have a department that has a colony of these beetles and yeah, so that's another option to check out. I'm also posting a link below to a website that I found with pretty much the same instructions. Um, I, I sort of followed them when I was doing my cleaning. He has some pictures there too, so it's just kind of like his blog if you want to check that out as well. Alright, well thank you. Good luck cleaning that skull.